it takes an outsider who's not brainwashed to actually see how dysfunctional the city is. Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? Pretty good, <coughs> did you? Yes, I did. I spent it with my neighbors. That's good. Yeah, it was really nice. Can I give you a dollar if I can interview about living on the streets or if you I'm do? I'm not or homeless though. Can I get audio at you least? Can totally, can you, you can, can totally I inter interview about San Diego? You can totally interview okay. me about San Diego. I totally have a <laughs> the have and have not thing is really interesting. So there's very few bathrooms, yet there's a lot of homeless, and they say there's a hep hepatitis A epidemic. Yeah, which is really weird because can, a lot can of I them. Film? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. A lot of the homeless people I've seen are taking the water out of the hand washing stations, which are clearly marked with "Do not drink water." And there are a few homeless people out here that are filling bottles that they pull out of the trash cans with that water and selling it to yuppies for a buck piece. I didn't know there was a water issue, a water consumption issue. Well, it's, not, it's, it's not so much a water consumption issue as it is that the, go the San Diego County has put out head washing stations that have water that isn't good for drinking. Uh -huh. And homeless people are selling that water to yuppies. Like, right. They like the rich people walking around. Okay, yeah. That's happening. Right I I'm originally from Portland, went to Colorado. I just had to see why so many people were fleeing, A, Oregon, because I couldn't even afford to live there, because okay. they were all coming from California. So the rent doubled and tripled. Yeah. Then I became homeless. Then I escaped homelessness, went off the grid. Yeah. So I made a pilgrimage to see this mecca of hell. I just don't even see, have anything positive to say about Southern California. or no, any no, no, I'll give you some positive things to say okay. about Okay. So well, you're, you're an artist, so you're a musician. The creativity, I'm into the, that. And me and my uh, yeah. boyfriend, my boyfriend yeah. is a glass blower. And when we first came back to San Diego, because I'm from San Diego, we were homeless. We lived in a 78 Volvo station wagon in Ocean Beach for two years. My teeth were really fucked up. He didn't have a job. He was offered a full-time job. We got off the street. Medi-Cal paid for my teeth. The Synergy Arts Foundation paid for both CDs. So, you know, now I have two CDs out since coming to San Diego being homeless. Right. I'm not homeless anymore. I have a job now. I work for Ace Parking. It's a great job. Yeah, life is good. Oh, that, really? That saw me through some shit, you know. And then this is the new one, Standing Tall, because I'm standing taller than I ever have before. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it is possible to get to a better place from homelessness in San Diego. It just takes a lot of effort. And a lot of right. people don't want to put forth that effort. And we've been doing nothing but work just to get to where we are. And but doing what you love, being being musicians, being a musician, and then being a whatever musician, else. And he's a glass blower, right. you know. He actually quit his job and started a business, Upazi, O O P space A Z I. And then I got hired at Ace Parking, and I still play music and I still record CDs. But you know, it's it's all about how you apply yourself, and that goes with anywhere, anywhere. I mean, we're planning on moving to Portland because you might be able to pick up a job in the glass industry out there. And we have to be able to adjust. And if there's anything San Diego has taught us, it's how to adjust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Catch yeah. 30 on Broadway going west. Over and, that way. Yeah, and it'll turn on first and go through Old Town and everything. Uh huh. Start with getting off at Silverado and Purcell and walk straight to the beach. You would just walk straight down uh, the same bus, the same street that the bus is on, go in the same direction the bus was until you hit the water, and then just follow the water east until you hit the sea lions. You'll know what I'm talking about once you hit the sea lions. Okay. And then you go back to that same stop and you catch the 30 going uh, toward uh, Discovery Way and Torrey Pines Road. So going toward UTC. You right. Get, get off at uh, Discovery Way and Torrey Pines Road and it's this ridiculous ocean view. And there's a couple of yurts there. They're kind of oddly placed, but you know, it's something different. Right. Straight up, like, there's, there are more equal opportunity housing places that are open and available in Portland. There are in San Diego because there are less numbers here, and the waiting lists are so long that people are waiting nine, ten years to even get the approval before they can get to a place, and they're waiting another two, three years for one to open up. There are terminally ill people that are homeless still waiting to be housed. Mm -hmm. I and mean, there are veterans out here. I mean, they can't even get help. There are, there are veterans on the street that didn't even get dishonorable discharges that can't even get their Section 8 because of how long the waiting list is. And I noticed that in like, other places there is no list or it's way shorter. They have a lot more available housing. It's ridiculous. Like the high rises, they're all contracted to leave some of their units open for low income housing and they leave the minimal so that they don't get fined, which is one to two units. They're not really housing the, the low income like they said that this program was supposed to. Mm -hmm. Not even close. I heard somebody talking about this, so this isn't 100%, but I heard that it went to federal court about homeless people and whether they could sleep on the sidewalk or not. Right. 
stuff, and, 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 that, they, that, and that they can't. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's 100% true. That's so. interesting because they're talking about only people under the bridges. And so if people are in Portland, the same thing. That's a big thing under the bridges where it gets really dirty because oh, they're pushed over there. Oh, in San Diego, people will just walk out and sleep wherever. They, like, they do not care. No, I heard, I was warned about the cops here specifically more than once. Oh, so they're pretty... Uh, the cops actually have toned it down quite a bit. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, but, yeah. But they no, developed a bad reputation. No, what you need to worry about is the locals in whatever area you're sleeping in. Those are the ones that are getting ridiculous because the cops have toned down so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's to the point where if you sleep on the street in OB, somebody might beat the shit out of you. I watched a kid go to prison two years ago for that. Some dude was sleeping on the wall, and the guy just came up and beat the living shit out of him. For nothing. A cop did? No, just oh. some random yuppie that lived in OB. Oh, okay. The citizens are starting to stand up to the homeless because the cops in San Diego have toned down so much. We have the hot team, the homeless outreach team that's run by the San Diego police, and they, they're more worried about finding resources than they are about putting people in jail. And it's the locals that are starting to get a little out of control. I mean, I've, I've heard stories about people sleeping in Wait alleys. Wait a minute. I just read a story about... a keen faces and shit. I read a story about a whole Mission, Mission Bay. Where's that? Mission, that's like... Kind of a guy was set on fire. I read that before I even left Colorado. Yeah. And then another place in uh, Northern California. Oh, over at Fisherman's Landing in Point Loma, there was a guy that was stabbed not too long ago. Another guy was shot. I'm lucky that wasn't during my shift because I work at that place. You know, like this... This is just what I hear, though. I don't know 100% facts, but people do talk about, like, the brutalization. And it's not even from the police. The police are really nice to me. This I'm, a... I'm a busker, and the police are really nice to me. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you're working and you're homeless? No. Or, okay. No, we, we okay. worked hard to get off of this. Oh, right, right, right. It was a challenge. Okay. But we, we did manage to get ourselves. But we didn't, we weren't just handed that. We had to actually get off of rashes and do something to get to a better place. Right. What was the key thing in that, though? Was it like, it could be sometimes... My, my boyfriend was offered a full-time position in a warehouse. Just okay. randomly. He sat on the, the wall of Ocean Beach making hemp bracelets. And any time he got an opportunity, he would take out his equipment and he would blow glass and he would sell that, too. And then somebody noticed how dedicated he was and offered him a job. And that's how he got off the street. It, you know, so it was random. It was right. It kind of was delivered or yeah, offered. Yeah, well, I mean, it was from a person that he had seen a few times out there, and they had become kind of friends. Mm -hmm. And then it came up in conversation, and Scotty was like, "Hell yeah, I'll take a job." And so yeah, we yeah. Oh, weapons are super illegal here, right? Like self defense. Not really. No. But how does someone defend themselves? I like looked online. If I, I can bring know. my baton, it's because like you can't. I, because <laughs> in any other state, I would be allowed to have a gun. Even though my husband, my soon-to-be husband, is a mm -hmm. felon, that but he, but he's that was over 12 years ago that he became a felon, and he's been he's like taken care of ever since. But California will not allow me to have a gun because I live with a felon. Okay. From 12, he's a felon 12 yeah, years ago. Yeah, I heard ago. the gun laws and, are crazy. The gun laws are crazy. Um, you, they freak out like crazy if you have a knife on you, even if it's legal. If a cop walks up, the first thing they see is that knife. They reach up and they grab it like you're going to attack them. Uh -huh. Some, and uh, if you defend yourself against somebody, they can legally see you in California. If you, somebody throws a punch at you and you knock them out, they can sue you. So it's really self-defense. There is no self-defense. Wow. I don't know. Tell me what you're going to do. Tell me, baby. Are you going to do what you want to do? So one guy came up and kind of hit his hand to get my attention on the garbage can and asked me for some spare change. And I said, I have any? And he grunted. Mm. Like, <laughs> we're kind of like typical. And uh, I walked by him a few minutes later, not to be confrontational, but I said, hey, I've lived out of a backpack before and maybe something else. But and I've also given out like 10 hours of cigarettes. <laughs> it's about the field, man. It's about your energy. I will try to take my own advice, but that's a pretty critical thing that I want to say. And not everybody should judge the homeless. They're not all on an angry wavelength. Some people actually do manifest their reality and create for themselves and escape their bad situation. Most people just don't give them credit. Like earlier today, we have the interview. We have the interview with a young lady who was uh, playing the guitar and she was talking about positivity and her boyfriend 
also in him getting a job or someone offering him a job. And then there's my story with doing YouTube and having support here and there, but also a little bit of YouTube AdSense at one point, an online job. It's about enabling yourself. She even understood it's about your content on the video side, but in general, it's about your thoughts, your energy, and there's a lot of mental illness in today's day and age. And I'm not just talking about the homeless. I'm talking about mainstream society. And the media hasn't helped, but the media isn't the only institution to blame. People should become more responsible.